Hat Man. Happy Little Games. This is a special Patreon request by Johnny Grind 77. Thanks so much for your support and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello there everybody, Patman QC here. Now I hate to be the kind of YouTuber to actually beg for likes at the beginning of my videos, but I've got to be that kind of YouTuber. To be fair, I haven't done this for at least a few years, so if you enjoyed this content or any of my videos, be sure and give me a like. It helps with the algorithm and it only takes a few seconds. Thanks everybody. Now anybody who knows me knows I could talk pro wrestling all day long. I could talk wrestling video games even longer. I've been playing these pixelated representations of muscle men in the squared circle since I first encountered tag team wrestling by Data East. While the game wasn't a traditional wrestling title, it did offer a number of moves. This was soon followed up by the legendary Matt Mania in the arcades and also the iconic pro wrestling for the NES, which helped lay the groundwork for what would become Fire Pro Wrestling. In 1989, American wrestling video gamers were slapped in the face with at least three wrestling titles for the NES, one of which is the wrestling game we are talking about today, Tecmo World Wrestling. This game featured a number of innovations to the wrestling video game genre, but it was also lots of fun to play. What does this game have in common with Ninja Gaiden? What real-life wrestlers were the inspiration for the roster of this game? So put on some tights and let's get ready to wrestle because this is the history of Tecmo World Wrestling. In the mid-1980s, there was one company creating some truly unique games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. While we had heavyweights such as Capcom and Konami, a third company by the name of Tecmo was hot on their heels by introducing some bona fide classics for the system. They had produced Ninja Gaiden in the arcades and realized fairly quickly that they could not reproduce the large colorful sprites of the original on the home systems. They reimagined the game as a side-scrolling platform title which helped blur the lines between a standard arcade title and cinematic masterpiece. This occurred thanks to a few different things. Director Hideo Yoshizawa had placed a greater emphasis on story than anything that had come before it. One of these would be 20 minutes of cinematic cutscenes, which was the first time anything like this had been done on the NES. This actually occurred thanks to Mr. Yoshizawa aspiring for a career in commercial filmmaking and somehow wanting to put in a type of movie to further along the game. Tecmo called the cutscene system Tecmo Theater, where the storyline unfolds through the different acts via animated sequences. But, no matter how good the meat looks, there has to be some potatoes to back it up, and this game has that in spades. The game features tight controls, challenging gameplay, excellent graphics and cinematics, and also a nice musical score. The game was fantastic and it sold like hotcakes producing two other sequels for the NES. Something else that Tecmo had done was create a stellar football game that created a sports series in the process. Tecmo Bowl started out life as an arcade football game which featured a large dual screen cabinet allowing up to four simultaneous players. Similar to what they had accomplished with Ninja Gaiden, the home console port would offer a number of upgrades over the original arcade game, including becoming the first console game to include real NFL players. The title was a massive success, becoming the standard for all football games, and kicked off the entire sports franchise that would eventually include baseball, basketball, 
soccer, and golf. In the late 1980s, professional wrestling in Japan was still seen as a legitimate sport, oftentimes with match results being printed in the daily newspaper. The higher-ups at Tecmo wanted to include wrestling in their video game sports series and gave the project to producer Atsunori Kawachi to design the game. He was a big fan of all Japan pro wrestling and, of course, the larger-than-life characters of the WWF and wanted to incorporate the little nuances that you would typically see on a TV broadcast. He decided to implement the Tecmo Theater mode into the game, giving players a more up-close and personal view of the action, something that had never been seen before in a wrestling video game. I've always liked looking at storyboards like the ones made by Hayao Miyazaki for his films. The NES is actually pretty good at showing still scenes, but when I was researching what the hardware was capable of, I discovered that there could be ways to implement cinematic display scenes with a certain methodology. Nobody else was doing it at the time, so I ended up taking the initiative to try and make it happen. It ended up working out really well. He was also a fan of RPGs and decided to include a system for leveling up your wrestler. Throw in some other unique features and you've got a pretty fun little NES wrestling title. After these messages, we'll be right back. Tecmo World Wrestling was released by Tecmo in 1989. As the story goes, you take on the role of an up-and-coming professional wrestler who has to climb the ranks of the TWW or Tecmo World Wrestling. Your goal is to make it through all of the competitors while training, taking your vitamins, and saying your prayers as you attempt to become the champion of the world. This is a one or two player game in which players control one of ten fictional professional grapplers who, coincidentally enough, appear to be based on real wrestlers. The Japanese version of the game featured much more detailed biographies for each character in its manual and also strategy guide, but when it was released here in the States, they were extremely simplified. Upon starting up the game, you select your wrestler and you can even change his name. That is, if you feel like Dr. Gildo isn't wacky enough. The roster includes Akira Dragon, who was based on Antonio Inoki, L. Tiger, who was based on Tiger Mask, Pat Gordon, who was similar to either Luthez or Carl Gotch, Rex Beat, who was your obligatory Road Warrior Animal knockoff, Jackie Lee, which in the American version is based on Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. In the Japanese version, he is based on Ricky Choshu. Boris Chekhov is a champion wrestler from Russia, although his moveset and appearance is clearly based on Stan Hansen. Mark Rose is a flamboyant wrestler with long blonde hair and oh-so-pretty makeup. He appears to be a combination of Ric Flair and possibly Gorgeous George or Adrian Street. Julio Falcon is another powerful grappler who, if you can imagine, is based on a bald Hulk Hogan. Randy Gomez has a similar appearance to Harley Race. And Dr. Gildo is based on Big Van Vader. You can immediately go into training which allows you to level up your character. You can perform either squats, sit-ups, or push-ups, mashing the buttons as fast as you can as if you were playing track and field. When the meter measuring your progress fills up, a sphere above it will be added. 
you can have up to seven in total with the more spheres you have the more damage your moves will do during a match be warned though because if you lose a match you will lose a sphere and you have to train again to regain it upon starting up the match the first thing you notice is that the screen is split into two sections the top part of the screen features the wrestling match while the lower part is covered by a giant text window which features the verbal diarrhea of Tom Talker who was TWW's commentator. This was probably the first wrestling game to feature continuous play-by-play -play action although WWF Micro League Wrestling on the Commodore 64 featured something similar but nowhere near as detailed as this. Tom will make his comments on the moves that are being performed as well as the wrestler's condition. His facial features also change throughout the match. Now I may be a speed eater but I'm definitely not a speed reader and with all of the action happening at the top of the screen it's hard to see everything he is saying. He does speak very good English, however, although keep an eye out for the devastating Northern Rights suplex. As far as the in-ring action goes, you have one button for punching and one button for kicking. The wrestlers have a number of shared moves with each character having a few unique grapples. The gameplay is very similar to the NES title Pro Wrestling, which is definitely not a bad thing. Typical Japanese wrestling rules apply including the standard three count for a pin. Being outside of the ring for over 20 seconds results in a loss as well as being on the top rope for over five seconds. Since there is no dedicated grapple button, the players walk into each other to initiate it. Each character has around 20 moves including their signature moves. These include body slams, suplexes, pile drivers, and more. You can Irish whip your opponent to unleash a backdrop or run at your opponent to deliver a devastating clothesline. While your opponent is down, there are a couple of different ground attacks you can use such as stomps and submissions, including the figure four leg lock and scorpion death lock. You can also go to the top rope to unleash a diving crossbody or flying knee drop. Sometimes your standard moves will cause the action to spill to the outside where you can inflict even more damage to your opponent. If you feel the hate flowing through your veins, you can ram your opponent into the ring post, but just make sure you're back into the ring before the referee reaches 20. After laying the smack down on your opponent for a while and their energy bar becomes half full, the move set will change slightly and you can now perform your special grapples. This was also when Tecmo Theater or Zoom Mode as it's now called is put into good use. In this mode the action will zoom in on a framed window showing a close-up animation with visual effects similar to what you would see on a TV broadcast. The music would also mute on a couple of channels allowing for the sound effects to become more pronounced. If you don't have the intestinal fortitude to play through the entire game, here are all of the special moves from all of the wrestlers that use the zoom mode. A lot of these are repetitive, but for the sake of completeness, I wanted to include them.
In the single player game, there is only one game type available and that is the championship mode. In two player mode, the gameplay changes slightly with the momentum meter shown next to the life bar. If you've never played this game before, it does get difficult rather quickly. You will be mashing those buttons like a madman, especially in training mode. If you manage to make it through all 10 opponents, you face off against the mysterious Blue King or Black King, depending on which version you are playing. The moveset and profile appear to be based on the Super Strong Machine. Apparently, he was disqualified in the early stages of the tournament due to being a bit too brutal. Not only is he the best wrestler in the world, but he is also faster and stronger than the rest of the roster. He has every single one of their moves at his disposal. After you defeat him, you are crowned the TWW World Heavyweight Champion. You are presented with a giant trophy while the crowd cheers. After this, the credits roll and the game is over. As I mentioned, the graphics are phenomenal, especially the zoom mode. Everything is detailed and makes excellent use of Nintendo's 8-bit power. The sound effects and music were produced by Kiji Yamagishi and Hiroshi Miyazaki, who also worked on Ninja Gaiden. The duo included a dramatic score, which will change in intensity throughout the match. It fits in perfectly with the rest of the game. If you want to listen to any of the sounds, there is a sound test that can be accessed through a cheat code. There are a few differences between the North American and Japanese version, including the commentator Yosushi Geki. Also, the personal trainer now has dark hair instead of blonde hair. The Japanese version also sported a password system which was removed for the North American release. 
This allowed players to store their progress, which made the game quite a bit easier. Although we never received any follow-ups to the game, its legacy lives on through various other wrestling titles. Thanks to the fantastic create suite of WWE 2K, you can download the Tecmo World Wrestling Arena and various characters. Not to be outdone, the fine folks who love FirePro have also created the entire roster for you to enjoy on Steam. Tecmo World Wrestling was definitely ahead of its time with its light RPG elements, play-by-play -play commentator, and zoom mode effects. The large number of moves that each character had was impressive, especially back in 1989 on an 8-bit system. The game is a lot of fun to play, so if you've never had a chance to fight for your right to win the TWW World Heavyweight Championship, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.